I'll start with this uh, saying mm -hmm. that uh, when you are shaving a sheep, right, and um, many of us are farmers, mm -hmm. you shave to the extent that uh, you don't get to the skin. Right. You have to stop when mm -hmm. you get to the skin. Mm -hmm. But for this finance mm -hmm. bill, right. we finished shaving the sheep. We're right. now getting into the skin, <laughs> so we need to do something. Right. Raymond, are you saying this as, of course, you know, an economist and someone who is aware of, the, you know, the financial implications of shaving the sheep a little bit too much? Or are you saying as, you know, a socialist who cares about the affairs of a Kenyan? That's the message to policymakers, right. to government, our honorable members of parliament. Right. They need to get the message uh, very clear. And from the news, you've seen stakeholders actually saying the same message, that mm -hmm. we need just to step back, be able to relook at uh, what you're proposing. Right. Because come at this time next year, mm -hmm. we will not have uh, our brothers and sisters in employment. Right. We may not have uh, the taxes that we're actually expecting. So right. it's actually a policy and an economic statement when right. I say that. Right. Well, we're playing the entire field, which is great. I also have Mohammed here, who is an economist and, of course, a public finance management specialist. Twelve years of experience. Of course, you do have experience in supporting governments to enhance transparency, accountability, and citizen participation in budget decision-making. Essentially, you're the guy I would go to if I want to get my finances correct. You help governments, though. Have you tried helping Kenya? Well, uh, Kenya is one of the countries that we are considering mm -hmm. in uh, the capacity strengthening initiatives that we are undertaking right. as an institution. So, yes, and uh, that does not mean that the government does not have the capacity. We right. have one of the most competent civil servants right. across the continent and globally. The civil service is laden with talent, and uh, there's no shortage of talent. That's all I can say for now. Clearly, even on this table, there's no shortage of talent. Now, of course, the African Capacity Building Foundation does have an agenda, considering we would call this the AFDB Week. What is your agenda? Well, looking at the AFDB, and uh, the theme for this year mm -hmm. is uh, transforming Africa right. and restructuring mm -hmm. the fin global financial architecture. Right. Uh, countries, or African countries, have been... Uh, several countries are in debt distress or at high risk of debt distress. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to the conversations, and including our president in Kenya, President Ruto, mm -hmm. uh, has been talking about the need to restructure the global financial architecture mm -hmm. and ensuring that African countries also can have a fair playing field in terms of how they access these loans and the repayment period and the, uh, the interest that is charged on these loans. Right. And part of that also ties to the finance bill discussions because because the government currently is speaking on the need to repay debt that has been incurred by the country. And that means that any debt that is incurred is a future tax. Right. You incur debt, you have a future tax to repay the debt. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't go anywhere? You still no. have it? It's, either, it, it's paid by either you or the generations to come. My goodness, so not it's, my children. It's shared, it's shared between us and the future generations. All right. Now, gentlemen, before we start getting excited, uh, we will be going through a few of the, you know, finance bill clauses, the proposed finance bill, of course. We're looking at a few VAT items or things that could be going from exempt to a standard rate of 16%. Now there's the issuing of credit and debit cards. There's telegraphic money transfer services. Maybe, Mr. Molendri, if you could just tell us, do people still use telegraphic money transfer services? Yes, we still have uh, those services. Right. And exactly, it's just an issue of transitioning. Right. Even uh, the mobile uh, channel that mm. we're actually using, the mobile banking, right. it's uh, just semantics. But what you are saying is right. we've moved from the cash right. economy. We've mm -hmm. now transitioned to digital. We are doing it over the mobile. Mm -hmm. We're doing it over the internet. Right. No one goes nowadays to the banking halls. Banking halls have been left as advisory centers for right. businesses. Mm -hmm. So as individuals, all our transactions are actually done on our phone. Mm -hmm. So all that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. we still have it. And uh, unfortunately, right. the government now seeks to be able to tax. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you're saying is, mm -hmm. that's money. Mm -hmm. And money should not sh 
should not be taxed uh, for VAT because Why? VAT is value added tax. So mm -hmm. when you're paying a hospital bill mm -hmm. from your bank account to the hospital, there is no value added on that line. You're just moving money from your account to the account for the hospital. Right. So